everything okay? You look worried. You look, you look worried. Or is that just your attempt to stay awake? Touching myself. Ah, put me in, coach. <laughs> no, I'm riveted. You are, thank you. On the edge of my recliner. <laughs> Welcome to a late show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I hope you're all staying safe out there. Step one, don't be out there. Stay in there. Because coronavirus is spreading like Trump's backside on a lawn chair. And yesterday, the president had his first COVID-19 briefing in three months, where he announced some startling news. He's noticed reality. It will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better. That is a Trump presidency promise. It gets worse. You can take that to the bank, and I would take it there quickly because I've got some really bad news about our banks. Trump has also really evolved on masks. We're asking everybody that when you are not able to socially distance, wear a mask, get a mask. Uh, whether you like the mask or not, uh, they have an impact. He said, not wearing a mask. <sighs> Remember, kids, smoking will kill you with its delicious menthol flavor. Your corpse will have a very relaxed T-zone. To give him credit, yesterday's virus side chat showed the kind of strong, thoughtful leadership we need in January. But I'm glad Trump finally announced his COVID strategy. We are uh, in the process of developing a strategy that's going to be very, very powerful. Wait, you finally have a strategy and your strategy is to develop a strategy? Well, now we know why you never wear a mask, because all you care about is covering your ass. You don't get credit for a thing you should have done half a year ago. Hey, I finally went over to your place to feed your dog like you asked me back in February. You're welcome. I don't know why they call him man's best friend. He didn't even wag his tail or breathe. But inspired by the president's swift delayed action in the face of a crisis, I believe it is time that I too develop a plan for coronavirus, which is why I have decided to announce that I am developing a strategy to leave the Ed Sullivan Theater. No, no, be quiet, live audience. I made up in my mind, and there's nothing you can do to convince me otherwise. So go ahead and hug each other and cough for good luck, because now I'm off to find a new place to take my show, perhaps a small guest bedroom for the next four months. But don't you worry, I will definitely cut my hair if this goes on longer than a few weeks. I certainly don't want to look like a middle-aged poetry professor who's trying to sleep with one of the freshmen. Hello. Hello. I really like what you had to say about proof rock. Let us go then, you and I. But now that Trump is willing to admit the virus is out of control, he made sure to socially distance himself from any of the blame with his favorite virus nickname. China virus, China virus, China virus. Okay, sure. The virus came from China, but the country you govern leads the world in the number of cases and deaths. Calling it the China virus doesn't make you less responsible for totally blowing the response here. That's like blaming Mexico for getting your ding-dong stuck in a bottle of tequila. It just wanted to meet the worm. And I know that's mezcal. No letters. Please. Of course, it wouldn't be a Trump speech without a major gaffe. See if you can catch it. We're also facing the challenge of a significant spice in virus cases across the rest of the Western Hemisphere, including Mexico. Really, we're seeing spice all across other countries with all kinds of people, and it's a scary spice. Also a baby spice, a sporty spice, posh spice. Sadly, it's really a spice world out there, and I just want to say to all the epidemiologists fighting this pandemic, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. So the speech was a bit of a downer, but Trump's energy spiced when he opened up to questions, including this one about Fauci and Burke's absence. Why are your doctors not with you here today? Where's Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks? Well, Dr. Burks is right outside. She's right outside? Well, go get her. And please tell me this isn't gonna turn into a Mrs. Doubtfire situation. Hi, it's me. Hi, it's me, respected Dr. Scarf Lady. Let's talk science charts and, oh, hello, my boobies are on fire. 
His chest caster is on fire in the movie. You've never even seen the movie. You, I'm not listening to you. Still, the president stayed pretty focused and on message for the entire briefing. That is, until the end, when a reporter asked him his thoughts on Jeffrey Epstein's alleged pedophile sex ring trafficker, and there's no description I could possibly add that would be worse than that, Ghislaine Maxwell. Now, Maxwell, who was arrested and charged with recruiting underage girls to be repeatedly sexually abused by Epstein and his friends, partied with all kinds of famous and powerful people, including Donald Trump. And Trump was asked by a reporter whether he thought she would turn state's evidence against those famous people. And his response was surprisingly surprising. Ghislaine Maxwell is in prison, and so a lot of people want to know if she's going to turn in powerful people. I'm wondering, uh, do you feel that she's going to turn in powerful men? How do you see that working out? I don't know. I haven't really been following it too much. I just wish her well, frankly. He wishes her well? So, okay, if you're keeping a score at home, if you're accused of spray painting a statue of a Confederate soldier, you're human scum who should be billy clubbed in the trachea. But if you're accused of recruiting middle schoolers to be sexually assaulted by millionaires, you get a greeting card. Wishing you well. Hope your cell doesn't have a rat if you catch my drift. We should leave no stone unturned. Roger that, pardoner. Now, for some reason, without any prompting, Trump pointed out that he and Ghislaine Maxwell know each other fairly well. Uh, I've met her numerous times over the years, especially since I lived in Palm Beach, and I guess they lived in Palm Beach, uh, but I wish her well. I guess they lived in Palm Beach, and I'm saying I guess, even though I already said I saw her a lot because we all lived in Palm Beach, and I'm just wondering if I say it kind of softly and casually, will I sound less panicky? Is it working? No? Anyway, let's get back to a more comfortable subject. I let 140,000 people die, and I wish them well. You. He's right. Trump did meet her, and meet her, and meet her, and meet her, and meet her. Wow, that's a lot of pictures with an accused sex offender. Also with Ghislaine Maxwell. Then, of course, there's the notorious video of Trump partying at Mar-a-Lago with Epstein and Maxwell right there. He really took the advice to heart. Dance like nobody's watching. In vaccine news, today we learned the government gave the pharma company Pfizer nearly $2 billion to produce a coronavirus vaccine by the year's end. That's incredibly exciting to hear. The year is going to end? In fact, if the trials go well, the vaccine could be approved as early as October 2020. This could yield 100 million doses by December and is the largest contract yet for the government's coronavirus vaccine program, Operation Warp Speed. Except, of course, for their critically acclaimed spinoff, Deep Space Free Injections at CVS. Trump is talking about the coronavirus again because he's desperate. Right now, the only thing rising faster than the number of COVID cases are the odds that Joe Biden is going to be president. Because it turns out voters want you to care whether they live or die. Huge mistake for Wendell Wilkie's 1940 campaign to go with this slogan, Wendell Wilkie wants to kill key. Biden's lead is largely thanks to the suburbs. Now, according to exit polls in 2016, Trump won suburban voters by four points. But in the average of all polls, Biden's ahead by more than 15 points with suburban voters. Trump needs to appeal to the suburbs. If this gets any worse, He's going to have to replace Mike Pence with a riding mower. Now, to frighten suburbanites, Trump claims that they will face rising crime and falling home values if a Democrat is in the White House. And he has not been subtle about it. People have worked all their lives to get into a community, and now they're going to watch it go to hell. Go to hell? We've been boarded into our homes for the last four months, afraid to touch our groceries or each other, only leaving to wait in long, socially distanced lines so someone could jab a cotton swab into our brains. This is hell. All we're missing is the devil. As part of the Law & Order Fear campaign, Trump rolled out this ad. Seattle's pledge to defund its police department by 50% even including a proposal to remove 911 dispatchers from police control. Joe Biden said he's absolutely on board with defunding the police. Listen closely. Yes, uh, absolutely. Hello, you've reached 911.
I'm sorry that there is no one here to answer your emergency call, but leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. This is terrifying. Armed criminals are breaking into old people's homes. But on the bright side, he is wearing a mask. So that rules out the governor of Georgia. Now, like a lot of scary movies, this ad is all make-believe because as multiple news outlets, including Fox News, have fact-checked, Joe Biden did not call for defunding the police. And as Joe Biden said in a recent op-ed, I don't support defunding the police. And you can tell the ad is a lie because they don't have audio of Biden saying he's going to defund the police. So instead, they do this. Joe Biden said he's absolutely on board with defunding the police. Listen closely. Yes, uh, absolutely. Hello. They just lifted that line out of context from an interview where he was asked if the government should shift some funding to social service agencies. Anyone could grab that audio to make Joe Biden agree with anything they say. Isn't that right, Joe? Yes, uh, absolutely. Do you enjoy being on The Late Show, Joe? Yes, uh, absolutely. Thanks. Oh, and Joe, what, in your opinion, is the best 70s prog rock band? Yes, uh, absolutely. Well, that's where you and I differ. I would have gone with Steely Dan. I'm not even sure why they bothered using footage of that old lady in the first place. It turns out that entire ad can be recreated using just clips from the movie Home Alone. Jim? Seattle's pledge to defund its police department by 50%, even including a proposal to remove 911 dispatchers from police control. Joe Biden said he's absolutely on board with defunding the police. Listen closely. Yes, uh, absolutely. Hello, you've reached 911. I'm sorry that there is no one here to answer your emergency call, but leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Keep the change, you filthy animal. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Although, if they really wanted to scare us, they'd use footage from the sequel, where Kevin McAllister meets a friend of child sex traffickers in New York City. We've got a great show for you tonight. I'll be talking to the author of Too Much and Never Enough, Mary Trump. Uh, are you going to stick around to watch that, Joe? Yes, uh, absolutely. Oh, great. We'll be right back. Uh -oh.